Well, my Destiny friends, it is release day for ARH8 Awaiting Fate, and the full set reveal was mere hours ago from when I'm shooting this. And as such, I'm still digesting everything, but I think there's some real gems in this set. So today, I want to cover some of my favorite cards, pointing out some of the really hot design pieces, and then discuss some of my early thoughts. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, my Star Wars Destiny friends. Welcome back to Dice Commando and the Commando cast. Thanks for checking in here on That's Right release day. We've been awaiting our fate eh -eh, for ARH8 for some time now, but it is it is here. So what I want to do today is run through some of the set. Like I said, I'm still digesting it. Kind of my, it's not like my first pass. It's like my third pass kind of takes. There's some really, really hot stuff in this set. Uh, I also do want to point out that the other reason I'm not going to do a full set review is A, for time, and B, I, I really don't feel good right now. That's why you've got the small cam and all that stuff. But hey, release day for a new Destiny set with all the work we put in. You bet. doesn't matter if I'm doing it from a hospital bed. Well, shouldn't make that joke. Who knows, 50 years from now, I might have to do that. But either way, you get the point. We're not missing this at all. All right, so uh, I'll go ahead and bring this up. We'll go through the database. To, again, not going through every card, but I want to be able to bring the cards up while I talk about them, and I just haven't, I don't have them all downloaded, and it'll also save me editing time. All right, um, overall impression on the set. Like I said, there's some really, really, really cool design mechanic pieces in this. Uh, which we'll talk about. The one of the biggest sub themes of the set, obviously, is the exhaust, an upgrade mechanic, right? Exhaust something on them that's in a good, I don't know, ten percent ish of the set or so. And there's some really cool stuff they've done with that. That's functionally the new mechanic for the set. Uh, but overall, there's, you know, especially if you look at the villain cards, specifically like the red blue villain cards. There's a lot of like nest, you know, we usually talk about the build arounds and how important those are to have for every set. And they try to do a really good job doing that. And, and they do do a good job doing that. But this time I think they've gone above and beyond specifically on villain red blue. Not only do you have your nested pairs, you also have crossover within those pairs that are built around. And I don't even mean just that the points fit. I mean that like you have thematic, right? Like you can do Balin, like you have Balin Shin and then you have other options with Balin and you have Thrawn and Elspeth and you have Thrawn and Enoch and like again you have these nested pairings to where they're all thematic and I think that's really cool really cool as well all right so what I want to start off with so I've got four things I want to cover um first I want to cover the mechanical stuff that I think is really cool because I think that's where obviously they probably put a lot of time into so I think we should start there then want to cover uh, the, the good stuff, stuff that I think is going to be legit good. And um, then we'll talk about what I think is going to be good out of the gate, like in terms of pairings. And then I'm going to go basically finish this off with some of my favorites. So like I mentioned, we're gonna, just going to go around and go pull the cards up as we talk about them. So the first one I'm super excited about, or not super, well, I am excited about it, but what I think is really cool is Enoch. And then I guess I'll have to do this in an overlay, the night troopers as well. So Enoch and the night troopers, the way that they work together to do the, I'm not going to say stealing a die thing, but kind of the reviving a die, maybe re retaining a die, whatever it is. That's a really neat mechanic. They really work together to do that. You can kind of bounce from one to the other, right? So you steal one and then you can bounce to the other. I'm still not clear on the ruling of if Enoch steals a die, does it become this die? I I think probably, but I'd like to see the ruling on that. Maybe it's already been posted. I don't know. Um, because that's relevant for this die in terms of, right, is it considered to be that character's die for the purpose of Night Troopers? I don't know, right? But e either way, it's, it's really, really, really interesting um, the way that whole thing works. Uh, the next part, so I don't need to cover Night Troopers because you you all get it. Um, the next part that is really, really interesting in this set that I think is really cool is we have yellow lightsabers. So uh, we'd already seen Sabine spoiled, but we also have the, the Nihil lightsaber, which also has redeploy. 
uh, a lightsaber that does indirect to you is, is kind of an interesting concept. That's not like a super blue thing, but it's not a blue lightsaber. Right. So I think it worked like, again, that's why I specifically want to go to this one. I think it's really cool. The two, two for one, the plus three. And after you deal damage to attach character the first time, you may re-roll a die, right? So again, your advantage to actually doing that, it's pretty, I mean, that's pretty neat, right? That's that's really creative. So props to the props to the team on that. I mean, whether it's good or not, like, I mean, it looks like a pretty again, let's go back. Like that looks like a pretty dang good two drop with redeploy, right? Um, and the uh, dealing a damage to it tracks with the weapon so it's not even like a built-in character ability so like even if you have like let's say a yellow character that has something to do with dealing yourself damage and it goes to the blue character that doesn't like to do that it carries i mean this this card i think a yeah i think it's really strong the b i think it's also really well done in terms of design okay and then we have uh where is it um we have wait what happened to sabine's lightsaber is that neutral oh no sorry that one nihil's villain sorry 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 got it but then yeah we have um see still learning learning like the rest of us we have sabine's lightsaber which is pretty cool two plus three plus three and to be fair on the villain one maybe we have seen actually isn't there the i actually think there's the neutral blue lightsaber the the yeah this one i think that one does indirect as well if i'm correct no it does not it does not at all yeah, it does. For the shield, it does indirect. Oh, it's coded there with the resource. Got it. Yeah, but it does on the card. See, yeah, I was right. I was right. All right, fair enough. Uh, next card that I think is really hot from a design standpoint, and shout out to whoever came up with this one, uh, Pax Visla. So not only is he good, but like this is really cool. So he has Guardian, and before he goes down, you just defeat him after the round ends. Um, what's interesting about this to note, right, is... When you guardian a die, you take the damage equal to the value on the die. So even if he only had one health, right? So stick with me. Let's back up. You can only assign indirect equal to the amount of health they have remaining. So if he's at 10, you could only assign one indirect to him. But if he guardians an indirect, he would take four. So he would go effectively negative at that point, right? Um, but you still wouldn't be able to assign. You still wouldn't be able to assign other indirect to him because he'd be off but in theory you could make them resolve or you could you couldn't assign that but you could i don't know in which case it would come up that you deal damage to a character but you could deal damage to them you just couldn't assign indirect to them i guess that's that's the point i'm trying to make so this is very interesting um he's a pretty good price point but like 12 14 for that it's not a bad price point at all for 11 health and then the fact that you probably get effectively two extra die i mean put them with somebody you want to keep i think i don't know i i think i think it works you probably get two extra effective die resolutions off of him um you do have to be careful though right like a lot of times we enjoy having redeploys on someone knowing that they're going to die and then waiting to activate our other characters so in that case your redeploys would be stranded but then i guess you have the advantage of not having to hold back and wait you just kind of roll everything in so so fair enough there um next one i really like this one i think's up in the villain or is it in the hero where's the senate okay zero senate guard oh it's neutral okay it's neither <laughs> neither i like the senate guard uh so guardian uh so six seven for seven not a bad price point with guardian and after it's defeated give a character two shield so effectively it kind of i mean shields are not health we all know that but you're effectively getting six for nine, right? Or seven for nine with the die, right? Because at seven, you roll in a set aside stun baton, which is not, a, it's not a great die, right? I think it's like a one, two melee, and then some other stuff that are all ones. Um, it's not super great, but, you know, is that worth one point? If you got a left over, probably. But I, I think the Senate Guard's really cool. I like that. And then the card that I saw out of the set that I was like, that is baller. I wanted to say this one for the last on my list is the Cycler Rifle. Um, we already spoke to the whole theme in the set of exhausted upgrades. So this is an insanely good upgrade 
two gun, three gun, three gun for an indirect, plus four for a resource, a disrupt, and a blank. But you cannot resolve this die unless the upgrade is exhausted. That's pretty cool, right? And then it it also has its own built-in thing to where you can exhaust it, right? And that's that's why th this this card is like this is top-notch design, right? And again, I know it's like an ancillary card on the side of the set, but this is the stuff I often get excited about. This is top-notch design, right? It fits right within the theme they were trying to push. It's well above curve, but it's not because it's got a restriction. But then they give you a way to remove that restriction. You can turn a blank into a better die. And it's not like 2x, it's like 1.6 value or something like that, right? What you would expect to get. Anyway, Chef's Kiss, this this is this is one of my favorite cards from a design standpoint in this set. I think it's really, really, really well done. So kudos to you all there. Uh, in terms of the good stuff, so, whoops. In terms of the good stuff, well, we were on it. <laughs> the, the, the Gonk Droid. This guy is going to be freaking everywhere. This card seems really, really, really good for what it does at one. It is not unique. Um, I don't know why that would be relevant, except for if you pulled two of them in like the edge case on your first turn, you could drop them both. But this dude is freaking phenomenal. One focus, one disrupt, one discard, one shield, one resource, and a blank. And after you resolve this die, you may turn a die to its first side, the topmost side. Hmm. This guy is going to be in a lot of decks. I like. I don't think that's a secret. That guy's good. All right, next, uh, yellow blue hero seems pretty good. I do have to acquiesce that when I even on like my third pass, I was thinking that this knee heel lightsaber was either neutral or hero, and it's not. It's villain. But either way, there's no shortage of sticks. So I think blue yellow sticks. Like even just, you know, the build around, which is Sabine. So we have Sabine and um, Ahsoka. And then you've got two blue spots with yellow cards in your deck. Seems pretty good. It seems pretty good. And Ahsoka is really cool. Ahsoka is really cool. Not a Jedi, though. She's got resilience or 14 points. I mean, that is a die for 14 points. Seems really good. Seems really good. Is that, I mean, I, and I don't think it's just those two, right? Uh, th this card, by the way, I thought this card was interesting as well. It's um, I didn't have it on my design list just because it's it's not it's really cool design. I like it, but it's not unique design. We've done something similar to that before with I think it was the, like the dual lightsabers. Um, I don't know whether that was an A or H card at this point or whether it was an F. Actually, I think it was an FFG card in one of the last ones, but. We had a mechanic like that, so it's not ultimately unique. It's a good, good weapon though. Um, then we have, oh yeah, that's right, Anakin Skywalker Spirit. Where is it? Is it neutral? Oh, it actually makes sense that it's neutral. Actually, I did, that's, yeah. Fair enough. So Anakin Skywalker Spirit. Um, the reason this one I think is good is because is this going to be enough to help Big Ray get pushed to where she can be like Flippy, right? I guess not Big Ray. I guess it'd be Flippy Ray in that case. But you get my point, right? You get more Jedi out there. Maybe. Maybe, right? One more of them. Totally doable. And then uh, the last one I had is Boba's Bacta. I think that's a hero. Maybe not. Nope, it's neutral also. So Boba Fett's back to chamber. You can't see it super good on here, but so power action, remove one of your character dice to heal one damage from that character or two damage instead if that die was showing damage. So that's interesting. We'll see how that gets used. Um, I think it's got potential, but you know, the fact that it has to be that character like so this is being neutral i don't, I don't know i kind of wonder if like black Kersantan or somebody uses actually that's probably i just came up with that but doesn't black Kersantan get put into it it's probably not even a mistake that's probably totally a thing that they meant see the playing 3d chess over there in the uk with their card design 
All right, uh, now let's go into the good stuff. So I almost, in an adult way, which I say jokingly because I have a son that does it frequently, but I almost pooped my pants when I saw Carson Tiva. So this guy seems crazy good. So Dak is on the reprint list, and it's like Dak who? Dak who? Because Carson Tiva, two gun, three indirect, two focus, one resource, and a blank, uh, special and a blank. Special is move two damage from a support to a character or vice versa. So you can heal two. We've got Wookiee Fluttercraft out there. Like, oh, actually, no, we don't. Well, it might have got reprinted. I don't think it did. Okay, so I, okay, scrub that. Either way, move two damage from a character to a support. You could either use that defensively or offensively or both. Right? And it doesn't have to be from yours. Like, right? Like, this is that's crazy okay and then how do you do that well after one of your pilot or vehicle dice is removed place one damage on a support or give a character one shield well they remove a die it's effectively one damage kind of what's interesting about carson is it specifically says move two damage so i don't think you it's not up to two so you have to move two i mean fair enough but either way I want to remind everyone, Benthic got reprinted at 15. I mean, that seems like really good. <laughs> like, really good. So we'll have to see how that floats. But I, I mean, I think, I think that's... I'm going to do Denbo out of the gate because I want to and I think it's awesome. But I think... Like if I was if I was playing the release tournament, I'd probably just roll guns with Carson and Benthic would be my guess. I mean not necessarily guns, guns and indirect, but you get my point. Okay, you've got piloting. And then on top of that, you have it just in the vein of that, right? This card in of itself isn't super crazy, but in that vein, you have smugglers run, okay? So it has ambush. Resolve one of your scoundrel vehicle or pilot die showing a resource, re-rolling it instead of removing it. Seems legit, right? <laughs> like, and make more money to drop more supports. Seems good. Seems good. Um, so then, okay, so Carson, and then another one who I have is being just, and again, remember, this is only my third pass, and I'm also not as good at Destiny as many of you all are anymore. Um, so I only have a short list here on what looks good, but Grogu also looks crazy insane. Um, so Grogu for two cost is two focus, one shield, three reroll, resource, special, special, no blanks. You may spot the support as if it were a blue character. Phenomenal. Special, sorry, yeah, special, remove an opponent's die and heal one damage, spot Den to give him a shield. That just seems really good to me. Not broken, not a, I mean, I think a little above curve, but I don't think it's broken or anything, but that just seems really, really, really good. And, and I mean, aside from Den, right? It just seems really, really, really good to me. So, fair enough. And then um, my candidate for cards, that, the, the card in the set most likely to get uh, contained in some fashion, I think, is Jawa Reclaim. The upside potential on this is crazy. So for one cost, discard one of your cards from play to play a card from your hand, decreasing it by the cost of the discarded card. That seems like it's got pretty crazy upside potential for big support. This card seems really, really potentially like a problem. So... Well, I mean, we'll see how it plays out. That there's some big cards out there, right? Like, granted, like Blizzard is gone and stuff like that. Um, but you've got big capital ships everywhere. This set introduced several big capital ships that are like legit good. Like, where's Chimera's up here? Like, Chimera's good. And then there's the the new yellow capital ship, I believe. Okay, three, four. Ugh, it's so good. I mean, and that's only a four even right um oh that does remind me there was one cool so jan dodonna is interesting um i really like the concept here so 24 29 f14 you're like well that looks garbage but he comes in with two rebel troopers remember the rebel troopers have guardian so that's cool 
Um, I don't think, I don't think he does. I don't think he does very well, but I might just not be seeing the play line. So there's certainly a lot of potential there as well. And I think people will be exploring that. Um, as you can resolve, I mean, again, resolve a support die without removing it from your pool or free without removing it from your pool. And then you've got ways to like recycle cards from play. I don't know. It just seems really, really, really strong. Um, oh, actually, you know, who I just thought of with Java Reclaim, Akbar. Akbar got reprinted and he actually poops you out a two. Yeah, he does. He poops you out a two every round. So with Jabra Reclaim, I guess it's only reducing the cost to play it by one, I guess, actually. That's actually not that good, right? What you really want to do on Jabra, and, may, and maybe that's why this ends up not being a problem, right? It's not because of the Akbar thing, but like, because you have to pay one, you discard a three, and then you play something for three less. Like, it still lets you play like a five or a six for just turn resources, basically. pretty good well i guess you have to pay one so it wouldn't be just turn resources either way i said that's in, but we'll we'll see we'll see we don't need to harp on that all right so now let's go into my faves um dinbo is i mean this has been out for a while i got to spoil spoil this basically on the kickoff uh with the guys on stream which was awesome so din sorry this is Bo. Right, doing the typical Mando thing. And then they pop the shields back and forth between each other if you go look at Din. So this one looks really fun to play. Uh, they're both smashable. I'm sure Dean is going to be all over this. If you do go through this set, there's a ton of smashable stuff. Um, I got to be honest. I think I think Carson is way too good for Smash Dean. <laughs> Just throwing it out there, bro. Like, he's seen, you know, because what are you going to do? You're going to go... You build his deck, you put three or four minimum, you put three or four supports in there, ships, because you need to be on theme. Like that seems crazy good, dude. So I don't I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what you want to do with that. But there's a lot of 15s in here, which is not an accident. I know they're actively trying to do that. So that's a cool thing, but uh, he seems too good. So Pax, Pax Vizsla might be a fun. Actually, Pax Vizsla, this is a great Smash character, actually. That's a super cool Smash character. So be looking forward to see what Dean wants to do in terms of that list, and then him and I can talk and make stuff happen. So anyway, that's... Oh, uh, I got a couple more on my faves that I want to give shout-outs to, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, the HK Assassin Droid. I really like this. So Guardian, after you deal damage to one of your characters, place one resource on this card. Keep in mind that Guardian in... Guardianing... Is Guardianing... Guardianing, yes, guardianing. <laughs> I think that's right. Is dealing yourself damage, right? So one, three for one, two for resource, or two for an indirect. So there's one way, um, and then specials gain one resource or remove up to four resources from this character to deal that much unblockable indirect to an opponent. So do you do that by the time this dude goes down? Probably not. Um, I do like this though, right? Because he's a Droid, guard, trooper, guardian, lots of stuff that happens. Eight points. You can run two of them. Ping, 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 ping. I don't know, whatever. It's 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 kind of cool. I, I think it's cool. And then we do know there's other ways to put resources on cards. I don't know if there's synergy there. I don't know if there's anything there or not. I just I like the I like the thing. And then like I said, kind of overall, the interplay between I mean, there's a lot of interplay between the blue and reds up here right Enoch Gideon by the way seems absolutely insane I think he's going to be a thing so man lots going on in the set like I said I haven't wrapped my head around all of it but it is release day you crazy kids have a week and change to get it all sorted out actually is that right no it'd be on the 27th and that's not how math works yeah you have a week yeah 13 days roughly 12 days I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, eight days, because I can't do math. That's not how math works. You have eight days. You have a week and change to get it all sorted out and then go pew pew each other. I think you're going to see a lot of Carson Benthic, I think. But, I mean, they can easily, you know, 
easily fixed. And I don't mean it doesn't need fixed. There's other stuff out there. Again, this set does definitely look like a step up in power level. Um, there's also a couple things in here that smell like Bassmaster. I know that he's been involved. I don't know to what extent, but there's a couple things in here that have Bassmaster like written on them, which is pretty cool. So anyway, thank you to the ERH team for making this happen. Lots of uh, fun stuff going on. I've been doing nothing but Destiny basically since like dinner time when this came out or when I saw it for the first time. So awesome. Thank you all. Nothing else. Go Commando.